So, um, I really wanted to take this opportunity as we're gathering to really give you an idea of what it's like to experience what I call listening to flowers. So, um, you know, my work with, with clients and with flower remedies is, is involved. And part of the thing that I do, aside from affirmations, is I, I work with guided meditation, I work with visualization practices, um, and it's, it's really effective to be able to go inward, right? Because a lot of the times, too often, we're trying to solve our challenges with our brains. And the brain is a wonderful thing, but if we only use our brains, we really often don't get anywhere. What we end up doing is keeping it in our minds and running circles in our heads, and sometimes we don't get the challenge resolved. So what I like to do with people and what I've discovered with myself is when we do the inner work, right, the intuitive work, that's really where the healing happens. And sometimes we need to use our logic to maybe discover why we have the challenge. But in order to create healing, we really do need to go inside. And so I am a guide for people in that way. And so today, thank you for allowing me to be your guide. And um, I'm going to do a meditation that I created uh, a few years ago. Some of you will remember it. It is the Divine Wisdom Meditation. And we did this in our Hydrangea class, for those of you who recall. And it actually, it's a meditation that actually came to me in a dream, honestly. And um, I don't really have prophetic dreams. I'm not one of those people. I, I often don't remember my dreams. But we were closing the class um, the next the following day. And I was thinking, I want to do, you know, I want to do something special. What should I do? So I went to bed that night and I woke up the next morning at like 5 a.m. And I was kind of in that, you know, half awake, half asleep state where you're... you're unconscious mind is really speaking to you and I had this dream of this meditation that I'm going to lead you through and I saw it so vividly it was one of the most profound dreams I've ever had and I led the class through it and it was great and I haven't led it before I've done it before so I'm really excited to do this and the reason I chose it the reason I chose divine wisdom is because of the lotus flower so um we have one blooming lotus today. It is at the main lotus pond, and I encourage everybody, you have to go by there afterward. Um, but you may have noticed there's a little bag on your chair, and that is a lotus remedy. And um, so the, the lotus flower, it is the, the national flower of India. And for thousands of years, not just centuries, for thousands of years, it, it was a primordial being that just comes up out of the water. And the reason that it is connected with our divine wisdom and heightened spirituality and enlightenment is because it is this weird being that only thrives in mud. So some of you, most of you probably know um, our recently dearly departed Buddhist teacher Thich Nhat Hanh. And he has a book and it's called No Mud, No Lotus. And this was a wisdom that he really liked to illuminate because the idea is that when we're suffering, most of the time we just want to stop suffering. Right? We want to get rid of it. We want to take that pill or eat that cake or go to that movie and just we want it to go away. And that might help for a little while. But the truth is that when we're able to go inward and touch our challenges, like really touch them, recognize them, and that's not easy, I know that, but give them care, then that is the catalyst for the healing. So without the darkness, without the depth, there would be no beauty, no light, no healing. So no mud, no lotus. So hence divine wisdom. And so what is wisdom anyway? Like when we say wisdom, well, you know, I was reflecting on this and um, to me, wisdom is the most evolved form of our logic. So again, logic's important. Our brains are great, right? But when we just go into logic, it can be dry. We can get into over-analysis, right? And then, again, we're spinning our wheels. We're really not going anywhere. So wisdom, to me, encompasses experience. 
It encompasses thought, feeling, and it's effortless. That's the thing. That's the thing. That when we're just allowing it and receiving it, and just even if we're not sure, do I have wisdom, we're just kind of like playing along with it. Okay, it's, it's there somewhere. And we allow it, then we're able to receive it. And in that way, we catalyze a spark of our divine wisdom, our enlightenment. So that's what I'd like to do today. <laughs> no pressure. So, so for those of you who have done this kind of work before, or done it with me, you know what to do. And you know what? For those of you who haven't done this before, you also know what to do. Because all you have to do is receive, okay? So what I'm going to ask you to do, oh, so about the sack on your, on your, on your thing. So I don't want you to um, take it right now. Just take the sack and you can, if you want to use some of it afterwards, you can. And this is a flower remedy and some of you know what that is. Some of you do not. Um, I can follow up with you later. But um, this is not one of the Bach flowers. There were no lotuses in England, I don't think. <laughs> in 1933, maybe they've been cultivated since. Um, maybe because of the India connection. But um, this is a flower that is, uh, was created by the Flower Essence Society in Northern California. And so when we take a flower remedy, we're, we're taking the essence of the living plant, the living being, and we're getting the spiritual medicine, right? So it's a little different than taking, say, an herbal tincture where we're getting the, the physical properties of the plant. These are the spiritual properties of the plant. So when we think of divine wisdom, when we think of lotus medicine, it addresses the dry logic, the over-analysis, the you know, getting stuck in our heads. Um, so then the transformation is that of divine wisdom. So um, I don't want you to take it now, but you can hold on to it. And um, later on, if you want to take a couple of drops. Also, um, if you knew it or not, um, those of you who drank and ate the food, it was laced with lotus remedy. <laughs> no psychoactive effects, I swear. But you are going to already start to just get some of this energy in you. And um, yeah. So let's begin. So I would um, like everyone to make sure they're comfortable. We'll just sit here for about 10 minutes, a little less. But just make sure you're comfortable. And I'm going to ask us to begin. Um, if you feel comfortable closing your eyes, if not, at least lower your gaze, look downward. Oh, yes, sorry. And uh, if you have your phone ringers on, if you could silence your phones, that would be great. body, feeling into your physical presence, and connecting deeply with your breath, and creating a very smooth inhalation and a smooth exhalation, allowing your breath to just flow freely, effortless. Place your attention at the bottom of your tailbone, pretty much the place where your bottom meets the seat. And I'd like you to envision a glowing light at the bottom of your tailbone and just breathing into that space and keeping your steady flow of breath Begin to draw that little ball of light downward 
down through your legs, through your feet, and right into the supportive energy of the earth. And then on your next inhalation, begin drawing that energy back up. So back up through your tailbone, up through your belly, up through your solar plexus, up through your heart, up through your throat, up through your third eye, and then bring that ball of light right up to the top of your head, and just floating effortlessly right on the top of your head. And in your mind's eye, just envision that light right at your crown, illuminating your powers of divine wisdom. And then envision that light right at the top of your head, right at your crown, turning into a little figure eight, the infinity symbol. And in your mind's eye, begin to trace the figure eight, keeping it right at the top of your head, and slowing it down if you need to, continuing the flow of glowing energy, and perhaps it's turning slightly like a mandala, just very gentle, steady, and effortless. And perhaps even the light is growing a little brighter, maybe a little bolder, and just allowing, maybe even noticing what color is your light. And as you stay here in this gentle rhythm, tracing the figure eight, the light growing stronger within you, you can receive the affirmation, I embrace the flowering of my divine wisdom. I embrace the flowering of my divine wisdom. And then perhaps a question comes. What do I know to be true? What do I know to be true? And just continuing on with the steady rhythm. The gentle light. your source of divine wisdom. It's available anytime. Continuing with the steady flow of energy, begin to make the light a little smaller. And smaller. And smaller still until it's back to that glowing ball. 
resting gently on the crown of your head. And keeping your nice steady flow of breath, begin to drop that glowing light down into your third eye, letting it rest there a moment. Then bringing it down into your throat, receiving the wisdom of your words. Then dropping it down into your heart. And slowly bringing it down through your solar plexus. Down into your belly. And right back down into your root grounding you. And feeling this flow of divine wisdom that you created. Part of your natural way of being. And just feel for a moment how good it feels to embody this wisdom. feel ready, still keeping your eyes soft, begin to bring your awareness back to your physical presence, slowly begin to bring your awareness back to the group, back to this magical space that we're in. And when you're ready, slowly opening your eyes, feeling refreshed, awake, and wise.